Nikki Aiken. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, I am grateful to you for the opportunity to speak in this debate and to highlight, as other honourable members have, the invaluable contribution that the financial and professional services industry make to UK PLC. With over 60,000 companies providing 2.3 million jobs and 10% of the UK's overall GVA, whilst two thirds of those jobs are outside London, I should stand up for my constituency and say that the City of London contributes approximately 25% of the sector's GVA alone. Madam Deputy Speaker, I have spoken to businesses and business groups in the City of London and broadly they are in favour of the Bill's overarching objectives. They want to see an efficient regulatory framework after our transition from the EU and in particular where changes help to ensure that the UK's regulatory regimes are more coherent and attractive to international firms, they are to be welcomed. They also strongly believe that the new regime must maintain the highest of global standards, maintaining the sector as a, as a strategic national asset and ensuring sound capital markets. Businesses also welcome the clear way in which my honourable friend and the Treasury have sought their views in coming to this position and are keen to maintain a dialogue as the Bill and the future regulatory framework review progress. Madam Deputy Speaker, if I may, I turn to addressing some of the specific content of the Bill. When considering the objective to enhance the UK's world leading prudential standards and promote financial stability, Businesses in my constituency are supportive of the Bill's objectives, but they would appreciate some clarity from the Government on some of the specific clauses. In particular, with regards to the implementation of FASL 3, as some businesses have been working towards the implementation of EU CRR 2, further guidance would be welcome on how the UK regime may differ from that of, that's involved in the EU CRR 2. With regards to LIBOR, wind down and benchmarking, again, I would urge the government to ask the FCA to provide the further detail and clarity that businesses require as soon as possible. Turning to how government intends to promote openness between the UK and international markets, again, the businesses I've spoken to in my constituency welcome these changes, but crucially would also welcome further clarity on how the Treasury intends to make equivalence decisions under these new frameworks. Business would also welcome assurances from the Government that they continue to look to improve the UK's global competitiveness. And I would like the Bill to be more explicit in this area and expressively, expressly uh, signalling its objective to, be, to maintain and even expand its expected competitiveness on the world stage. I hope that the government will continue to work with the financial sector to ensure that this crucial aspect can be developed in relation to further rules. In particular, when it comes to considering differing international tax regimes and access to talent. Turning to the third objective of the bill, maintaining the effectiveness of the financial services framework and sound capital markets, these provisions have been broadly welcomed, as businesses in my constituency know that an effective financial services framework has significant impact on both business and customers, ensuring clarity in regulation and providing sound support mechanism, me mechanisms for customers has to be welcomed. However, the bill also enshrines significant powers to regulators. I would ask Treasury Ministers to consider whether they are satisfied that existing appeal mechanisms are sufficient um, and will they uh, increase the level of autonomy given to regulators and whether they may be something worthy of consideration in this House at another time. In that theme, I would welcome from the Government a financial services strategy for the sector this may enable arm's length financial regulators to ensure that they are interpreting the have regard to objectives in the context of the government's vision for the sector. Finally, in light of 
the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, the objective of maintaining sound capital markets should not be underestimated or forgotten. The capital market provides a vital source of funding for businesses alongside the lending market. The measures included in this bill will help support a market which is vital to re-energise the economy post-COVID. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would encourage the Government, with one eye to the future, to consider how this bill demonstrates UK leadership in addressing digital and sustainability related regulatory challenges. As whilst a recovery from COVID may dominate the short to medium term, the continued development of fintech and our response to the global climate crisis are surely going to be a long-term consideration for the financial sector. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill should be welcomed as a necessary but early step as we leave the EU. But I believe that a fuller, more comp comprehensive overhaul of the UK's regulatory framework is required to ensure that the UK, and in particular the City of London, in my constituency, retain their competitiveness as a global financial centre. And I look forward to working with businesses and Treasury Ministers through the passage of this bill and surely others to follow to implement the necessary changes to ensure just that. I commend this bill to the House.